Welcome back, MMA Odds Breaker. This week we're talking to Eddie Gordon, getting ready to fight uh, Josh Semman coming up here in uh, UFC 181, uh, December 6th, of course, here in Las Vegas. Um, I talked to you, Manz, a little bit ago. We had to push the interview by a couple hours because you were at football practice, but it wasn't football practice for you. It was for your kids, right? Yeah, it's for the kids, man. Uh, they convinced me to coach, and uh, it's been one heck of a ride. We got the playoffs this week, so I'm pumped. Are you a, a position coach, a, the head coach? I mean, what are you? What's your, what's your spot? I'm Coach, so you know, I kind of didn't want to be that dad that was uh, coaching his kids and going nuts, but they convinced me, they reeled me in, they found out I had a football background, and uh, so I just help out. Was it hard being, you know, trying not to go nuts for your kids every play that they're in? Yeah, at first, you know, it was, it was more of like I'm chairing instead of uh, coaching, okay, <laughs> but kind of, I kind of uh, picked it up after the, the, the first year. So now I got it. Uh, I pretty much got it down packed. But um, it's good, man. I, I feel like I separate. I tell the kids I'm I'm not dad, but I'm on the film, coach. So I kind of you know separate the two. What? Uh, how old are your kids? Um, Irish twins, man. Eleven months apart. So I got a seven year old and I have an eight year old. <laughs> nice. Uh, it, that's the East Coast thing. Cause I say Irish twins down here all the time. They look at me like I'm not, like, what the hell's an Irish twin? Like, is it you know they're, they're two redhead kids? Are they like what's an Irish twin? I'm like, nah, man. It's come on. Anything under, pretty much anything born under 13 months apart is Irish twins, 14 months apart. Yeah. I thought the year. I learned something new every day. See that? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it wants to, you know, it's the most fertile time for a woman is right after she gives birth the first time. So it's like next, the right after, nine months after, you got to be even more confident. I learned the doctor knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's talk about Josh. <clears throat> You're seven and one. He's 10 and two. You know, if you look at if you look at photos, I would say physique wise, he looks so much better physique wise. You know, but it's like one of those weird things where like the camera and and the media are gonna jump on, oh look at this guy, look what he looks like, and this is how the bet maker is gonna go and all that. But it's not, we all know, we've all seen Fedor fight. Don't be fat, little funky, you know, pasty ass Russians win fights. It's just how things go. Um has there been much has there been much, you know, First, first of all, you just break down Eddie for us, or, or excuse me, break down Josh as an opponent. Like, how do you see him when you watch tape? Um, when I watch him, man, I see that you know he's obviously um athletic. Um, I think I feel like he's good everywhere, but not great in any aspect. Um, any single real point of uh, the, the the game, but he's definitely got heart, man. Every single fight I watched of him, he started out a little bit shaky. Um, his last fight versus Kevin Casey, he got caught in all kinds of crazy positions and. He battled and fought his way out of it. So um, he's going to be hard to put away, but that's my goal, man. You you know by watching tape on him, and just so, just so you can understand, that this this doesn't air until the week of the fight. So don't worry about giving any kind of game plan or anything like that. By the time it comes out, it's too late to fix anything. But from watching tape, when I watch him on tape as well, I see that he, he starts off shaky. So if I'm preparing for him to fight him, my concept is be, I'm going to attack him right away because he starts off slow. So I'm going to beat him up as quickly as possible and chase him down and, and jump into that, that mindset where, where he's not ready to go yet. He's still trying to warm himself up. Is that kind of what, what your coaches have been going over with you as well? We kind of want to be like fast starters, man. Like I feel that I want to, I want to go in there with you know my best and I'm aggressive, man. I'm from start to, to, to finish. And, you know, during the tough show, I kind of got away from my style when you get different coaches and they want to implement their game plan. I've been a football player my whole life, so I'm very coachable. But I kind of went back to my roots and just being, you know, straight ahead, forward, push the pace, jump on top of him, and kind of make him realize that, you know, this is a different fight that he's never been in before. So you hit it on the head. Did you bring somebody in specifically for this fight to help you mimic Josh's style, or did you have somebody already in camp that, that did that? Well, we just been focused on getting in guys that's like 6'3". I'm fortunate enough to have, you know, Chris Weidman in camp with me and, you know, he's, Volante. He, he's just, I mean, why even bother doing rounds with him? That's just stupid. Like, he's just, he's got to be the worst guy in your room, right? I mean, he's just. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I'm, I'm fortunate. So, you know, I had Volante, who's another big, strong, athletic 6'3 guy. Oh, good. So everybody I've been sparring been 6'3, 6'2, just to get used to that range and that, that height and that length. Other than that, I really didn't have to bring anybody crazy in. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have great partners. Uh, so that just been focusing on what I'm good at. No, it seems sometimes, because you, you can hear Sarah and Longo in the corner. Like, 
the camera and the microphone on the other side of the cage, you can still hear him. And sometimes when, when Longo talks or gives instructions, it comes out really garbled. Like we don't like I'm literally trying to listen as hard as I can, and I don't understand what he's saying. Does he have a specific like? Does he change words up and change up what he's saying specifically for you, so that only you understand, so that the opponent can't grab it? Or is he sometimes so excited he's just a mush mouth? He might might just be a mush mouth, man. He just he, <laughs> he he's got that New York accent, yeah. but it's like it's like your ears almost trained to it. Yeah. You know, every day foreign, you get to hear him, you know, shoot out these commands, and you get used to it. So that might be our secret weapon. Uh, only only us can understand what he's saying. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because like you know, I saw him at uh, CFFC a couple weeks ago when I was out there commentating. One of your steel mates was, was fighting that night, and I saw Matt. And I had asked Matt one time actually, what, what did he say? What was that? Because his accent's so thick, I kind of lost it. And he was excited. He was talking about another fighter that he had coming up. Oh, he's talking about Alec Quinta, who just fought uh, in the UFC. He was talking about him, and he was getting so excited. He, his accent really popped out, and then I got lost. I got lost in the in the, in the metal a little bit. So. Oh, not many people could uh, understand and can keep up with us. That's good. It's an it's an advantage. It's obviously it's an advantage. Because if I'm at home on the couch, calm and patient, Long Island. Yeah, yeah, right. If I'm on the couch, calm and patient, and I can't understand him, then you know the guy you're punching in the head has no chance of understanding him at all. <laughs> exactly. Now, when you're in the corner, you said you're very coachable, uh, and but you're in in the cage. Do you listen? I know you, obviously you listen to to to, uh, to your coaches. But do you listen to what the other coaches say as well, telling telling their opponent, telling your opponent what to do? I, I hear that so a lot of guys do. I kind of, I kind of try to block it out because you don't know if they got little cold words or combos or whatever it may be. So I kind of don't want to. I just want to kind of, you know, you know, what is it? Uh, tunnel vision. And I'm just so used to, you know, sparring and having my coaches call out stuff that their voice is distinct from the crowd, is distinct from everything. So I don't really worry about what, you know, their coaches you know, are saying and going because a lot of times, you know, I'm sure, you know, they play head games. They'll try to tell you, yeah. oh, he's getting tired. He's this, he's that. They're trying to get into your head. So I don't play. I don't, I don't, I don't even listen to them. On this card, there's a lot of really, really good fights, uh, especially the main card, the last five will be on, on uh, television. You know, an incredible amount of fighters on here. Is there another fight in this card that you're kind of looking forward to after your fight's over? Uh, man, I tell you what, this card is stacked, man. Like I, uh, they're gonna make it really hard for me to get a bonus, but I'm on um, that's that's the that's the goal. That's the goal. But I don't know, man. From top to bottom, I feel like this thing is is, is sick. You have Anthony Pettis, who I have a relationship with now, uh, fighting on that card. Obviously, Lawler and Hendricks. That was you know a fight of the ages, the first fight. Yeah. So I wanted to see Hendricks, you know, with a good bicep, could uh, open the gap a little bit. So there's a lot of stuff. You know, from the looks of it, you know, I'll be fighting right before Uriah Faber, who I always look up to. I feel like that guy brings his A game every yeah. single fight, and it's never a dull moment. Uh, Travis Brown, it's like the card is stacked. So you know, it's and that's you, you mentioned some action. What I ask you because you are earlier in the card, and usually if there's a knockout later, even though there's a bunch of knockouts earlier, they tend to give it to the guy that's later in the card. You're in a position where knockouts, submissions, fight of the nights. Legitimately, can happen in every single fight. All ten fights on this card. There's, there's not a fight in here that's that's boring. They, Joe Sylvan and Sean Shepard did such a good job of matchmaking, getting getting these fights to come together. That does it frustrate you sometimes? Even though, hey, this is a great card to be on, and, and the pay per view number is gonna be amazing, and the people watching us on Fox Sports One is gonna be incredible. It's gonna be amazing. But I got no shot. You know, it's gonna be tough for me to get the bonus, like you said. Yeah, you know, like I know. Uh, realistically, if you go out there and you perform then the bonus will come, man. If you go out there looking and chasing the bonus, you might get a loss. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, when it comes to it, you know, win first, entertain second, and that bonus will just be the the, the icing on the cake. I feel like if you put on a good show, you're going to, you know, make the fans want to see you, and you'll end up earning a bonus somewhere along the line. Yeah, the good news is, is that uh, you may not get a bonus that night where they make the public, oh, here's your 50 grand, but you might get a bonus by getting a check. A week later, in the mail, I was thinking, "Oh, you see, sent me, sent me something. Is it my pink slip?" And you open it up, yeah. it's a check. You're like, "Okay, all right, I'll take this bonus." You know, yeah, yeah. I take what, man. And those are the good ones that you know. Dana White, the Fatita brothers, they they take care of their fighters, and, and you put on a good show, man. I feel like uh, you'll get rewarded. Yeah, they do. They uh, even when I put on a bad show, they took care of me. So it was always it was always nice to get get that extra check, you know, from those guys at the end of the day. Uh, 
it, it does go a long way with the, with the athletes. You know, when you're like, look, I'm, I don't think I did a good night. I, feel, I lost, I lost a fight, but I still got a bonus check. Yeah, man, that's um, that's always a good bonus, especially with the uh, December, man. You know, Christmas time is right around the corner, so got to keep these kids happy. You get a bonus for knockout of the night. Let's just put it out there. You get bonus for knockout of the night. What are you doing with the money? Um, I'm gonna. I probably can't have taken them to Disney World afterwards because they're not gonna be able to come to this fight. They came to my finale fight in okay. Vegas. They got school now. Um, so I'm gonna probably go on vacation. Just put some of that away, man, because you know, realistically, can't fight forever. So I'm very frugal. Well, <laughs> so let's not forget you, you live in you know you, you live in New York. It, it's it's not it's not cheap. You know, uh, uh, a fifty thousand dollar bonus in New York is not the same as a fifty thousand bonus in Georgia, or the same as a fifty thousand dollar bonus in Nevada. It's it's it, you know out here it goes a lot further. So a lot of that money you do have to put away because you're never sure when the career is going to end, what you're going to do, and how much you got to pay down in your house and. And all that stuff. So it's it's uh, it's smart that you're saying you're gonna put part of it away, but realistically, how much are you really gonna put away? <laughs> I'd say I'm gonna at least put thirty away. Thirty away. Oh, okay, good. Okay, well now we're gonna hold it to you. So you win the bonus. I'm, I'm gonna hit you back, and I want to see that see that that statement with one of the savings account for thirty you know thirty grand went in. The first person I tweet to Instagram that that deposit slip. <laughs> I like it. See, I'm number one. I'm number one to something. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least first. So. Listen, I'm a, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction, so we're talking about it. So now you know it's going to happen. Yeah, I've uh, I've learned lately. If you put it out in the universe, it literally it's been within the last nine months. You put it out in the universe, and somehow it comes back. It just you just got to put it out there, and that's what we're doing right now. So I'm hoping you get it. It'd be great because I can say, look, I told you so. <laughs> when it happens to everybody else, look at my interview. I told them it was going to happen. See. Actually, heard it here first. <laughs> All right, Eddie. Thanks for coming on here. I appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, I'll be in, I'll be in town for this one. I'm hoping to uh, uh, to be able to watch this one live. It's gonna be a great fight. It's gonna be a great card. You, in, it, it is really fun to, to uh, get to interview a lot of different guys that that uh, cause there's so many different personalities that come out of your your camp with uh, uh, Sarah and Longo. So it's very very fun for me to, to talk to different guys and the mentalities and the personalities and stuff in that camp. Nah, man, the pleasure's all mine, man. Matt hit me up. He said, Frank wants to talk to you. I was all for it, man. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you me. never had a dull moment. You always put on a show, man. So Thank those you. are the fighters that, that, that I watch, and I want to, you know, make my career, you know, look like yours, man. You always put on a hell of a show. All you got to do is, is uh, to make your career look like mine is uh, talk a lot of noise about any one particular guy, and then uh, make sure you lose by rear naked choke when you lose to him. That's all you got to do. <laughs> and it mimics. It's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud. Thanks so much, man. Have a great night with your kids. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, man. Have a good one.